Yeah. For the uncertainty principle in Jankovli and the new textbook, they are different. They are mm, different how are they different? The factor one half. Factor of, ah. Uh, in Jankovli, it's called as it's larger or equal to uh, H bar. In the new textbook, is Yeah. Different. So. The whole work follows it. So Giancoli is actually worse. I don't know if we, yeah. So this is what this is what um, this is the question that um, uh, Gauge is bringing up. That sometimes in the in it, it, this comes up with a with, well with a, some textbooks you see this form of uncertainty relationship that uncertainty in position and uncertainty in momentum, their product, that there's a, some kind of lower bound to it. And almost every time you see this uh, particular form, it would not say it this way. It wouldn't put it that way. It would always say it's uh, approximately greater than or equal to. It'll be always in that format. Once you have that, then essentially you are, the main thing you're trying to teach is not the exact value of the lower limit, but the idea that there is a lower limit. Because that fact alone is a break from what you are assuming in classical mechanics. And, but once you introduce this portion, then that gives the textbook writer a license to write down any one of these three different forms. H, H bar, or H bar over two. So H just uh, you know, refers you to this uh, uh, lower limit on uncertainty. It's somehow related to the Planck's constant and exact relationship to be covered later. When you say H bar, well, it's, uh, I mean, it's still related to the Planck's constant, but it's a way to introduce the notation H bar, which is nothing more than uh, H divided by two pi. And this H bar over two, this is the exact relationship. So when someone uses this, it'll be in this form. Delta x times delta p is greater than or equal to. There's no more approximately nonsense. And it's because uh, when you do quantum mechanics in a more rigorous formalism, either wave mechanics or matrix mechanics, and you define these as the standard deviation of the, the distribution of the position and momentum, then um, this is the relationship. So let me just, uh, rather than just you know, saying this, let me just show you some examples of this. So our textbook, University of Physics, that's the easiest one to show it in. So let me do that. Wait, uh, I guess let me first go there and then hide this upper portion. Um, where's my, ah, there it is. All right. Oops, ah, I forgot to, sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, I made a mistake. Uh, I should have hid the table of contents before I hid the thing that lets me hide the table of contents. So when you look at our textbook, so this is the uncertainty relations that they are giving you. And when you look at it, you see that it's, it's a straight bar. There's no squiggly nonsense there. And I can, uh, I happen to have an, or I think I still have an instructor account, pearsonmastering.com. So the publishers, they usually give instructors free access to, uh, um, their material, only to instructors, not the students. So <laughs> I can show you what a peer, two different versions of Pearson's textbook says. There's the Gian Colley, which is what we used to use as the textbook. Um, and I actually haven't looked in a Gian Colley in a while. Gauji, you're telling me Gian Colley uses that H bar version? Yeah, H bar version. Okay. Um, oops. Ah. Yeah, and their justification would be, um, so I would be surprised uh, when we look it up if they didn't have this uh, squiggly thing. 
Yeah, because they are telling you, so this is the approximate value. All that's important there is that the idea that there is a lower limit, not whether what the exact value of the lower limit is. Sort of like with the, uh, it's like with the error estimate. It's like, you know, do you want three significant figures in your error estimate? Usually one significant figure is good enough. You just want to know how precise you are when you are doing stuff. So when you look at this, uh, yeah. So, um, yeah. So oh, oh, the, it gives you both versions. See? It gives you the one with just the H <laughs> and gives you the one with the H bar. <laughs> But so what? Just, so this is not entirely wrong. The re reason this made it through a bunch of reviews is this squiggly line. It's an appro approximate thing, and in fact, um, we haven't done much of this. Maybe we'll do this uh, for your exam three. Some of the results that we get in Bohr model, there are ways to get at the same result by using uncertainty principle. I'll show you an example of that after exam two, and it'll be part of exam three, maybe. So your exam two, it won't lean heavily on uncertainty principle, it, uh, mainly because um, we didn't do much with it. Um, I, I do want you to know, I do assume you know, there might be some multiple choice questions on it, but a big chunk of this, we are saving it for exam three. Yeah. Uh, let me show you while we are here one more textbook. So this is the conceptual physics textbook that I used to use. It's also from Giancoli. Oh, it's not Giancoli, Pearson. Um, let's see. Uh, um, I think it's this one. Let me just do, uh, um, and I, I guess, um, this is one thing I can say to try to justify why this might be more preferable. I think when you put h bar over 2, uh, sometimes people might fixate overly on this. So when you give people exact form, you probably should do something exact with it. So if you're not going to do anything exact with it, then um, that including the factor of 2, even though it's more correct, it confuses people more than it actually helps them, sorry. <coughs> Uh, I'm on the wrong section. Wait. Maybe this is the right section. Bohr model, quantum mechanics. Wait, does it not? So this would be a textbook for <coughs> physics 10. Um, so let's see. Wait, where's the uncertainty principle? Mm. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't waste the time with this one because <laughs> it actually doesn't matter to you guys. Uh, yeah, uh, let me not waste time with that. I haven't looked at this book in a while. I don't know where the uncertainty principle is. Um, so, okay. Any other questions on homework or anything else you found in the textbook? 